created the world as human beings possessed of free will, it would not be possible even for God to know precisely how the freedom might be used. He forwarded the comments from the British philosopher at Oxford. God acts in such a way as to make uh, creaturely freedom possible. It, it may seem that God can only know the future completely and in every detail. So it seems that God could know the future in every detail, but in fact God renounces such knowledge in order that finite creativity exists. There are necessities of the divine nature which mean that God cannot exist in a state of unmixed bliss of the all-determining power of unrestricted knowledge if there is to be a world of free creative personal agents. Falkenhorn finds you know, the idea implied in modern science of passing of mechanistic theory, he writes, signals the rise of quantum and chaos theory and, um, and yields a vision of the universe that is both divine and open to both divine and human agents. It reveals a supple and subtle world of true becoming. Reveals a supple and subtle world of true becoming whose future is open, potential and open. Um, we do not need science to tell us this, but neither do we define that with us. The future is not yet formed in particular in ways it is being made to as we go along. And as, of course, God knows what will happen and what he will do. Reply, I think, but prepared for whatever it may come and can also accomplish his purposes in other ways, in new ways. Ironically, belief in exhaustive different foreknowledge is negative, the negative ones only. Knowing exactly what, what's to come doesn't allow God to change everything. It's a simple room. It's too late for that. Uh, not only are our, our, our hands tied, but God's hands are tied. Um, exhaustive definite foreknowledge offers God nothing by way of us, nothing by way of providential control. And God cannot regulate the future. It is already settled. Present knowledge uh, is in keeping with the dynamic universe God has so wonderfully made. I like this a little bit. This. In the latter part, open theists have had to face a number of objections, some of them more trenchant than others. Uh, it's good that our views have not gone un unnoticed and have been responded to. And I have a baker's dozen of these. So let me do a few as we move towards five to eight or so. But I've got about, as I say, a baker's dozen of objections that we have to look at. I guess there's probably a lot more. The sharpest criticisms emanate from the determinists. For centuries they have battled Armenians, and uh, now the horror of or, or a new version of the old heresy has reared its head near all the ideas. Like this, God will be thwarted, prayer protecting God, I'm human cooperation and stuff. And these uh, people belong to a tradition which is opposed to pure theism from day one, and they're at it again. Um, uh, in recent years, given the Abdul coalition from the 40s in America, where Calvinist and Armenians have coexisted um, rather harmoniously, there doesn't seem to be a much open warfare, but now the feathers are being ruffled again, right? and the ruffled feathers. I think the heat I heightened um, pressures or objections. So that's one thing. The second one, and I refer then to more to the class of Armenians who think that we can go with. Um, a timeless God and a uh, God with simple foreknowledge, and that would be better just to stay with that. And so that's, a, that's important for us to, to consider because these people want to accept almost exactly what we want, and um, we must be sure to help each other with the suggestions. It's quite common among conservative critics who want a simple way to dismiss us to hold to guilt by association. We say we are process theists, to which the evangelical mind is tantamount to calling us wolves in sheep's clothing. <laughs> I admit that we do have such many things in common with process thought. We 
we do agree with them about points, certain points. But as a process theist, I know, um, but as a process theist about open theology, John Cobb and Griffin do not think that we are process theists. For example, they have seriously given misgivings about our work, especially as we've seen the last couple of days, the question of creatio and, and supernaturalism. It's funny how close uh, Philip was to, uh, to Griffin on that very central point. No more miracles. Not disappointed. Four, some complain that open theists are not classical theists because we question how some of the attributes can be defined and understood. But we are good company here. We're not considering the fact that most theologians uh, seek to understand the divine perfections better, um, whether they be immutability, impassibility, timeless eternity, all of which um, are basic to classical theism. So why are we criticized for operating in this way and trying to make contributions? Why is it acceptable to entertain Molinism but not uh, open theism? We all agree that God's knowledge is great and is it the cause of the key? Oh, um, open theists are not only exploring, um, open theists are not only exploring how it might work if um, God had created a truly dynamic and historical project. Yeah, I think I'll just stop right there. <laughs>